Well, good evening and welcome to another Wednesday's Word. Uh, we're glad that we we're able to come to you now online. Uh, we're not meeting on Wednesday night, so we're back to the uh, Wednesday's Word devotional, and we pray that all is well with you and your family, and pray that uh, this Word today will be an encouragement to, to you and your family. Uh, today, we're looking at Philippians 4, 6 through 7, so if you have your Bibles, uh, if you turn there, we're going to look just at these two verses and kind of see how that will help encourage each of us during this time. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, anxiety, uh, obviously, during this time is, is running high in a lot of people's hearts and minds. I know that's probably not news to you. Matter of fact, I read an article or part of an article that uh, talked, it was a survey from Johns Hopkins, and they had done a survey and they came to the conclusion that anxiety and depression had tripled uh, since the beginning of this COVID-19 virus, tripled. Uh, obviously, all that's going on in our world has elevated people's anxiety. Uh, like I said, that's Probably not news to you, it, you know, anxiety is all around us. And uh, this scripture here uh, addresses that issue about being anxious for nothing. Matter of fact, I've entitled this devotional, The Prescription for Anxious Thoughts. When we go to the doctor and we discuss with him what our problem is, uh, more than likely he gives away, gives us some sort of treatment, or at least many times a prescription, so a medicine he'll give that he'll give the amount and when and how to take it, and we trust him to give us the right prescription. Uh, but here in God's word, the prescription for anxiety is laid out for us. What we need to do when those anxious thoughts come. You know, the Bible says, be angry and sin not. Uh, anger is an emotion. It comes, and so when we have that emotion, what do we do with it? Well, we can respond rightly and not sin, we can respond wrongly in sin. The same way when an anxious thought comes, what do we do with it? Well, the Bible tells us clearly in this passage what to do, and so let's look at those. As we look at anxiety or, or worry, uh, it's interesting that the English word for worry comes from a German word uh, that has to do with choking or strangling. Uh, isn't that a what anxiety and worry does, it strangles us. It, it takes away our energy, our vitality, because it can easily consume us. Matter of fact, when Jesus talked about the seed that was being thrown out, which the seed was the Word of God, uh, he ended up talking about those that were thro thorn thrown among thorns. And when it does, it says that the worry of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the world choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. It just chokes it. That worry of the world chokes the word and then it becomes unfruitful in our life. And so that's how devastating worry and anxiety are. You know, Dr. Greatheart once said, the biggest troubles you have got to face are those that never come. Isn't that a neat way to put it? The biggest troubles you've got to face are those that will never come because many times that anxiety is over things that will never come, but those troubles are things that overcome us. Listen to what William Barclay once said. He said, the worry that wears out the mind wears out the body along with it. Worry affects a man's judgment, lessens his power of decision, and renders him progressively incapable of dealing with life. Let a man give his best to every situation. He can give no more. And let him leave the rest to God. You know, it does. It becomes overwhelming. And so we need to look at that and see what the Scripture says so that we can deal with that anxiety when it comes. So let's look at a few things that I wanted to address with you. First of all, the Bible in this passage says, don't do it. <laughs> Just don't do it. It says, be anxious for nothing. Now that's a command. 
You know, just like Nike's commercial is just do it, uh, this commercial would be just don't do it. Uh, and you say, well, that sounds easier to say than do. And I agree with that because anxiety is, is something that we all have to deal with. Uh, so first of all, we've got to realize the Bible says not to do it. We've got to have that mindset that, hey, if it says not to do it, I don't want to do it. And of course, we don't want it because of the effects that it has. So then after we look at it that way, then what does it say to do? Well, it says to pray about everything. To pray about everything. Because it says, but in everything by prayer and supplication, that means whatever the issue is, small or big, we take it to the Lord in prayer. And there's several things that I think we need to realize. We say, okay, I pray. But I think there's some things that we need to stop here and look at some ingredients. Not necessarily we in our one of our uh, classes, we, we talk about those issues of prayer. But I just want to talk about just a few things that I think we need to focus in on when it comes to when we're praying to, to be uh, fruitful in our praying. Is first of all, to pray with relationship in mind to pray with relationship in mind remember the very beginning of that lord's prayer says our father you know he's our father our heavenly father we have that relationship with him when we know christ as our personal lord and savior i think it's uh, appropriate to note here it's our father he didn't say my father and that's how important in the church is that we're a family and he didn't even tell us, you know, my father, that it would just be about me. It's about us, our father. We're a church family. And so, but we're praying to our father in heaven. And so we have that relationship with him when we're saved and we're praying, praying to our father. We, we look at our own uh, issues as parents. We just love our children. Uh, we would do anything for our children. And God is much better parent than we are. He's a perfect parent. And so when you're going to the Lord in prayer, on these anxious thoughts, remember you're going to your Father in heaven. If you're his child, remember how much he loves you and how much he wants to do for you. And so that, that helps with our anxious thoughts. You know, uh, also I believe another thing that we need to keep in mind is pray with kingdom priorities. Pray with kingdom priorities. Remember in the prayer that he mentions, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it's, it's about him. It's about his kingdom. And our focus needs to be on his kingdom priority. Even though we have some thoughts and concerns in our own personal life, we need to always keep his priorities in mind. Matter of fact, Matthew 6, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. We've got to keep focused on him. Uh, there was a man one time late for his plane and he was running through the airport and running and he didn't think he was going to make it. And he passed this guy in a uniform and uh, he, as he went around him, the, the man said, hey, what are you doing? He said, I think I'm going to be late and miss my flight. And he said, what flight is that? And he told him the flight number. And he said, I'm the pilot for that flight. He said, just chill out, walk slowly, because that plane's not going to leave till I get there. You see, if we really believe that he's in control, it's his kingdom, he's sovereign, uh, that plane's not going to leave till the pilot gets there. If God is running our life, he's the pilot. We're trusting him. We're believing him to be in control and have surrendered our life to him. Then we may think we're late, but God's always right on time with whatever answer he has for your life and mine. Even though it may seem delayed, it's not. So we wait on our pilot. We wait on the one that's in charge. And we need to watch that we don't catch ourselves uh, taking over the cockpit. We need to be back in the back in our proper place, uh, waiting on the pilot to make the best decision. And then also pray with a one day at a time mentality. You know, that's what God gives us grace for. 
Matthew 6, 34. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. You know, we have to have that one day at a time mentality. We can't get the grace that we need for tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. We get the grace that we need for today. And so those worries and anxieties, we won't get the grace and provision for next month and next year. We need to live with that one day at a time mentality. Lord, I need your grace to deal with today. I need what you give me today. You know, I've told people, sometimes people say, I'm worried about death. I don't know how I'll handle it. I don't know if I'm going to be worried about it. I don't know how I'm going to react or whatever. Well, you're, if you're not dying right now, you won't get the grace for that right now. God will give us the grace when we face that situation. And so we live with that mentality of one day at a time. And then lastly on the praying, pray with a trusting and a leaning mindset. A trusting and a leaning mindset. You know, we've heard that verse so many times. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. It's trusting in him while we're praying. We're trusting and we're leaning not on our understanding because that'll create anxiety, but on his understanding and his viewpoint and the way he sees things and not the way we see things, the way the word, word, the word tells us to see things. We can't lean on our own understanding and we have to trust him. And so that's how we have to pray when we're praying with these issues of anxiety or anything else. We need to have those four criteria that I mentioned as we pray. And then the third thing that that verse talks about is be sure to ask. When we do ask, ask with thanksgiving. We've got to ask with thanksgiving. Because that passage that we read says, when we talk about it, it says that we do it with thanksgiving. So it has to be accompanied with that when we pray. That grateful heart. Remember the leper you know, that those, those lepers that were there, only one came back to give thanks. You know, that was so sad that only one of them would return. What happened to the other nine? Well, they didn't return back to give thanks, but one did. Because gratitude is essential in our prayer. Remember, Daniel, <clears throat> when the decree went out that you couldn't pray, you know, to, and, and he went back to his place and it says in Daniel 6, 10, he was praying and giving thanks to God. See there? Pray, praying and thanking all together. And so that's part of our prayer. And why is that so important? Because gratitude is, is so essential in every relationship. If a couple and a marriage, if they don't have gratefulness and thanksgiving for what each other does, it's going to it's going to end up destroying the marriage because uh, people love to be, have other people around them to be grateful. Uh, you love people to be grateful for what you do and not take you for granted. And that's the same way we are in our praying. You know, as when we're praying to God, our Heavenly Father, uh, He wants us to be grateful and thankful for the things that He has done for us and is doing for us currently. And so we have to have that grateful spirit. That, that does a lot for anxiety because now we're seeing all the things that God is doing, not all the things that we're praying for him to do. That, that encourages us to look at that grateful list. Matter of fact, 1 Timothy 6, 6 says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. What's great gain? Godliness, living right with God, being right with God, and right relationship with our Heavenly Father, and mix that with contentment. That's a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving, content with what God has given us. That's great gain. And so that great gain will help us as we're dealing with that anxiety, as we're praying through this. So, you know, we do the math. You know, uh, one man once said, you know, you're either going to count your blessings or magnify your problems. It's, it's all about the math. <laughs> count your blessings or magnify your problems. And so that's what helps when we do pray with that thankful heart for all that God has done for us and, 
and to us and for us. It, it's just a grateful spirit. You know, they, you know, they always say that, you know, that's why a man will want to sometimes do a project uh, for a neighbor or friend more than he does at home because he gets more gratitude and thankfulness from those people. That's why a woman may want to cook for uh, a neighbor or friend uh, more than she does at home because she has, uh, there's more gratitude there. And so we don't want to be careful that we are a grateful child to our heavenly parent, our Father in heaven. And then lastly, we see the peace of God will guard our hearts and our minds. That's what we need to look forward to as we look and see that that's going to happen once we do what we just spoke about. It says there, and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace that does what? Surpasses all comprehension. Why? You can't understand why in the world would you have peace in the midst of all this anxiety? How, how could that happen? Well, when we do it the way the Lord says to do it here, it'll be beyond our comprehension. You say, well, I just can't explain it. It's just God and his peace is on me, even though the midst of these difficult situations that I find myself in. And then it says it'll guard. It'll guard. Remember, Paul wrote this letter to the Philippians in prison. He more than likely had a Roman guard right beside him. And it was he was guarding the jail cell and guarding Paul. And so uh, who knows if that uh, kind of, as you look at this, that this guards our hearts and minds. You, you think hearts, that, that's our feeling, and our mind is our thinking. That when we do all this, our feelings and our thinking are guarded. That sets a guard around that because that's where we have those anxious thoughts in our feelings and in our mind. But once we do this, the peace of God guards those thoughts, guards those feelings. You know, in this age of home security and alarm systems, whatever, we want everything guarded. Uh, alarms on our cars, alarms on our buildings, alarms in our homes, because we want them guarded from intruders. Well, anxiety is an intruder. And this tells us the peace of God will guard both our feelings and our thoughts in Christ Jesus. Boy, what a great promise that is to have that kind of promise from the Lord, that kind of peace that can be ours. It starts out with, don't be anxious. It ends up with talking about the peace of God guarding all of our thoughts and all of our minds. That's a great promise. So as we go through these times of difficulty and anxiety, I encourage you and myself that when they come, I want to be reminded of these principles that the Lord has in his word for all of us to take those things to the Lord and be able to receive and, and, and experience that, that peace that passes all understanding. Let's pray. Father, I pray for each person, Lord, that's hearing my voice, Lord, that you would, uh, God, just bring all these things to all of us, our remembrance, as those anxious thoughts come that we would grab these principles, Lord, in our mind and hold on to them. And we too would experience the peace of God that passes all understanding, Lord, that would guard our minds and our hearts. Lord, I pray for each and every uh, person, Lord, that uh, you would just allow them to hold on to these truths, Lord God, and they would see your promises come through in their heart and their mind and give you honor and glory it's do your name in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, again, continue to reach out to, you know, as we mentioned, our Father, which art in heaven. We are a church. We are the family of God. Continue to reach out, minister to one another, check on each other, call, email, text. Just be able to continue since uh, with all this to be the church, the church of the living God, to reach out and minister to one another and pray for each other. Uh, I continue to pray for you and lift you up to the Lord. And uh, I thank the Lord for you. I thank the Lord for our church and all that he's doing and that uh, how we need each other, we need him. And as we walk through this time, may God get all the glory and all the honor. God bless you. I love you. And until we meet again.